Praise be to God. Welcome everybody. Today we'll be talking about um, the rabbis say that Jesus' behavior in the temple was wrong. That's the event where he began to cast out all the people, the money changers in the temple, turning over some of the stalls, uh, and then saying, my father's house is the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And the rabbis say that this behavior was uh, wrong. So today we'll be going through the three T's, the Torah, the Tanakh, uh, and the Talmud, uh, to see whether in fact uh, the rabbis are correct uh, or indeed they are wrong. Okay, praise be to God. Firstly, I would like to apologize to um, some of you that you will find that because the recording device that I, I use uh, only allows me um, 30 odd minutes uh, and then it cuts off and then it sets up a new file for me. So um, you, if it cuts out after about half an hour, then just go straight to part two and it will continue off uh, where um, part one left off. It will go straight into it. Okay, I'm sorry. I wish I could do the whole thing in one, but at this particular time, I can't. Uh, praise be to God. Firstly, we have to start with, in section one, we're going to look at God's uh, behavior in the temple. Now, remember, the Mashiach, when he comes, uh, is to relate uh, the feelings of God to his people. So, before we look at the Mashiach's role in the temple, we shall first take a look at God's behavior inside of the temple. Firstly, if you turn your Bibles to um, Isaiah 63, 5, you find and Isaiah 26, verse 20, and uh, Exodus 33, verse 1 to 3, you find therein God warns Israel to be careful of his wrath. Uh, tells them in Isaiah 26, 10, that hide in the room that I provide for you, <clears throat> That until my wrath is past, because my wrath is a comfort to me. Wow. When somebody's wrath is a comfort to them, um, you have to be very careful around them. So there God warns as well to be careful of his wrath. So now let's look at God's behavior inside of the temple. And not just God's behavior towards anybody, God's behavior to his blessed prophet, his blessed man of God, the blessed high priest whose rod and blossomed to show that's the one that God chose. So we're going to see God's behavior towards Aaron and his sons inside of the temple. If you turn in your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 10, Okay, the book of Ikra, Leviticus chapter 10, you will find um, there we see um, Aaron's sons, the priests, uh, they offer up strange fire to God and uh, God's anger comes down in a fire, a fire inside the temple and burns them to a crisp. Okay, in front of Aaron. So Aaron is seeing his two sons on the floor burnt to a crisp because God is angry, because inside of his temple, God now loses his temper in a holy way. He, like he warned them, be careful of my wrath, for my wrath is a comfort to me. Isaiah 63 verse 5. And God shows no respect to persons, heir and sons, and kills the two sons. So there you see, when God is in his temper, God's temper can rail up even to the point, never mind Yeshua turning over some temples and 
pushing people out of the temple to protect it from contamination, which Leviticus 14 deals with in the leprosy chapter, the contamination of a house, which we will look at. Never mind Yeshua's small um, in comparison with God's anger now, killing Aaron's first two born sons. So that's God's behavior in the temple. And on top of that, it says Aaron was silent. God said to him, don't let me see you mourn. Tear your garments eh, for the death of your two sons. Don't let me see you drink wine. You stay here and finish the job that I have got for you to do. And Aaron's response is silence. So there's no complaints towards God with his behavior in switches um, very dangerous behavior inside of his temple. Now, what will we be looking for when we see the Mashiach? Because remember, as God said about King David, David, he said, he loved him. He chose him because he's a man after his own heart, which means he reflects the attitude of God's feelings uh, okay, for Israel. And there we see that the Mashiach, when he comes, which is greater than David and Moses and all the rest of the prophets, will reflect the anger, not just the love, but also the anger of God inside of his temple. And Aaron was silent. So does it not also reflect that we should be silent concerning what the Mashiach does in the temple instead of opening our mouths in criticism, okay, to the anger and zeal of the Mashiach inside of the temple because of wrongs that were being done. Even Rabbi Skobak in his teachings on the New Testament teaches at the time of Yeshua, Jesus, the priests and those who sold doves uh, were extremely corrupt uh, for the high priest position was bought from the Romans and there was people in the temple being corrupt in the selling of doves, which is documented. So Yeshua's anger towards the priest and the money changers is fair, even if you disagree with him being the Mashiach. So there you see God's behavior in the temple first is a very dangerous and angry one. And to finish this section, God even in, um, by, in the book of Leviticus, in Parasha, of Akarai, chapter 16, um, God warns Aaron um, Yom Kippur to no longer come into the Holy of Holies when he feels like it, just once a year. Can you imagine going to your friend's house, your really good friend, who you were very close to, who you used to visit regularly, okay? And he tells you, or your rabbi tells you, now I only want to see you once a year. You can just come and see me once a year. Why? Because there's things about you that annoy me so much that I might decide to kill you, okay? So <laughs> we can see inside of the house and the temple of God, God's behavior, is again something to be afraid of. And even so, Aaron is tied around with a rope when he visits the, the, the Holy of Holies in case he dies, even when he visits once a year. So again, it's like your friend telling you, and even if you come once a year, you still may die. So bring a rope just in case I decide to 
kill you. So there you see the behavior of God, the Father, inside of the temple is one we have to be afraid of. So the question is, when the Mashiach comes to convey the feelings of God for his temple, when the Mashiach enters the temple, shall he convey and represent the same emotions and anger and wrath towards the people of God in order to help them become afraid. Remember, the book of uh, Proverbs said, the wisdom of God is the, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Jeremiah chapter 5, God will destroy all those who do not fear Him. So, will the Messiah convey the feelings of God's anger when He comes in to the temple. So this is the section one. And it's surprisingly when the rabbis criticize Yeshua's behavior when he entered the temple, none of them firstly look at the behavior of God in his temple. The rabbis being so consumed, okay, with uh, um, a disbelief towards the Mashiach, Yeshua, that they forget to see whether his behavior was indeed in line with the, behavior, the writings inside of the Torah, the Tanakh, and the Talmud. And that's what we'll do in the, the following sections, uh, looking in to the role of the Mashiach uh, when he comes. So in section two, here we have now dealing with the role of the Mashiach when he comes. If you turn in your Bibles to Malachi, Malachi chapter 3, you have it speaking. Um, it said, Then the messenger whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Which Radak, uh, the Rabbi Radak said, is none other than the Mashiach. When he comes to the temple, he shall be like a refiner's fire, a fuller soul, who shall be it towards the children of Levi, that's the priest. Okay, and hear what it says. Who shall be able to bear it? Who will be able to endure the fire that the Mashiach will bring to the temple? Who will be able to bear the soap as he brings it into the temple? And of course, the soap is to clean the filthy things that are inside of the temple, like God did with the sons of Aaron. In fact, in Leviticus chapter 10, verse 3, God said this, after he killed Aaron's sons, okay? He said, I will be sanctified in all those who come near me. Meaning that all who come into the temple risk being sanctified by God. And the way God sanctified the sons of Aaron was to take their lives. Even so much that Later on, in the, uh, as Aaron's sons were offering, there was something that looked like to Moses that was done wrong, that Aaron and his sons did not eat of the, the, the meal offering. And um, it looked as if God may kill the other two sons. That's how God sanctifies those who come near him. So this is what Malachi chapter 3 is saying. Who shall be able to bear the sanctification and the fire that the soul of the Mashiach will bring? Malachi chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. Read it. Okay, so that's the role of the Mashiach. Does that sound familiar with Jesus entering the temple? Because we have no account of anybody going into the temple and conveying the same feelings of God except Jesus. So now here we come to the book of Daniel. Um, in verses 24 to 26, it talks about before the destruction of the second temple, this is what will happen, that the termination of transgression, the wiping away of iniquity, the end of sin, the fulfilling of all the prophecies, 
the entering in of everlasting righteousness, meaning the temple is no longer needed for sin because the Mashiach is coming to bring that in. Daniel 2 verse 35. So in that chapter you see that again the Mashiach is coming to deal away with the temple and bringing in a everlasting righteousness that no need for the temple. That all that happened before the destruction of the second temple, which of course is what we believe Mashiach uh, did. So again, that's another purpose of the Mashiach, was to end the second temple. Then of course you go into Midrash Mishle 9.2, where it says all festivals shall be scrapped, annulled, except Purim and Sokov and um, Kohalas Rabbah 11 verse 8. In the Talmud it teaches you that the teaching of the Mashiach will make the teaching that we have now as meaningless. So you see the Mashiach is bringing a lot of dynamic changes. So when he enters the temple, something is going to be done uh, that looks like it is not done before because uh, it is for him to represent the emotions of God towards the temple. In the Talmud, in Sanhedrin 38a, Jeremiah the prophet tells Israel that the house of God has become contaminated. Of course, the contamination is a spiritual leprosy. And if you turn in your Bibles to um, uh, chapter 14 of the book of Leviticus, the parasha dealing with Tasia, which is leprosy, that in chapter 14, we are told that the job of the priest is to come in and to clear all the things in the house that has been contaminated. Okay, that is a command. But of course, you see when Yeshua has come, according to Rabbi Skobak, 2,000 years ago, not only was the priesthood extremely corrupt, but those who sold things in the temple, again, were corrupt, with complaints have been made. So Yeshua now is coming and doing which the priests wouldn't do. He now, like the zeal of Pentecost, who was not a priest but became a priest by God, through the zeal of God, now begins to clear the house out over things that have been contaminated. And then later down to verses 48 to 52, inside of the book of Leviticus chapter 14, you find that God then commands the two birds. Okay, a bird is killed and slain and one is set free. And the the, the Vitabitabam, the book here, which all Orthodox um, Jews will read, in the commentary by the rabbis states that um, in page 83 in the Vitabitabam of Vika, it shows that the gematria for two birds equals 370. Also, this is Mashiach, is the same value of 370. So the rabbis conclude that the two birds represent Mashiach ben Joseph and Mashiach ben David. Of course, to me, it alludes to the first coming of the Son of Man, Yeshua, and His second coming, both coming to cleanse the temple of God inside of Israel, the physical and the one inside the spiritual. So it's showing you from um, Leviticus chapter 14 that the two birds represent the Mashiach. This is Mashiach, 370 in the Gematria, and two birds also 370. The Mashiach alone in this chapter is the one who can truly clear the temple. So Jesus is sure, amen, was only fulfilling prophecy and the role of the Mashiach because it is him alone that has the authority to clear 
the temple of all things that are contaminated, which he indeed did. So we see that Yeshua, Jesus, is not only fulfilling the behavior of God that we saw in section one, he is also now going on to fulfill the role of the Mashiach by clearing out the temple, the things that have contaminated it. And why is that important? Because if you read Leviticus 14 um, with the leprosy of the house, if the leprosy that contaminates the house is not dealt with, then what happens to the house? The house is destroyed, which of course is what happened to the second temple. So in the first stage that the Mashiach must do when he comes, he must clear the temple out of all things that contaminated. And so this is why Yeshua, amen, is only fulfilling the scripture by his actions. And when the Mashiach comes, that is one of the things that he must do. And none of the other prophets did it. Not um, uh, Moses, not Isaiah, not Jeremiah, not Elijah. Why? Because they are not the Mashiach. But Yeshua came with the seal of God and cleared the house of all that contaminates it, trying to prevent its destructions. But like Isaiah said, you have ears to hear, but you do not hear. You have eyes to see, but you do not see. So Yeshua, amen, was fulfilling the role which only he, according to scripture, could do. Now again, none of these points are related to when discussing the actions of Jesus inside of the temple. It's not enough to accuse. You have to relate the actions according to the scripture. Okay, now in ending um, this video, we have um, section three, where we see inside of prophets, other prophets' behavior, we see a similar zeal beginning to brew. Why? Because God is showing you he knows that people are going to criticize Jesus for casting people out of the temple and doing it what they perceive is a violent way, which of course they have not looked at the other scriptures which we have today. So one is the book of Nehemiah. If you turn to Nehemiah 13 verses 8 and verses 25, you will see Nehemiah um, um, casting out Tobiah and all these belongings uh, which were contaminated out of the temple courts, okay? And remember, Nehemiah was building the wall. He's the one that completed the work. What does that mean? That the one that will complete the work, which is Mashiach, he's the one that will come and with force begin to cast out of the temple courts those things which contaminate the temple. And in verse 25 of Nehemiah 13, chapter 13, we find that Nehemiah goes around and slaps the people on the face, pulls their beard and their hair out and begins to curse them. Again, the man who completed the work, Nehemiah, is a prophecy pointing to the one, the branch, which is, which is the Mashiach, which will come and like Nehemiah, will behave in a way that will look to people violent and wrong. But did God criticize Nehemiah for slapping them, pulling their hair out, and cursing them to purify the temple? No! So why do rabbis say that the actions of Jesus was wrong? No! He's fulfilling the law and the prophets which you see. Secondly, you find that um, Zechariah chapter 14, at the end, as the temple is being built, Zechariah said that the one will come, that no longer any merchants will come and sell inside of 
the temple. And in Malachi 1 verse 10, is there anyone that will shut the doors? And of course we see there was no one in all of the history of Israel to shut the doors to prevent that contamination. Why? Because it was the Mashiach's role. 370, remember, uh, the role of the Mashiach alone to come and to clear the house and to shut the doors that no more contamination will come. Praise be to Hashem. So now you see today the vital importance of the actions of Yeshua in clearing the temple clearly written inside of the T for Torah, T for Tanakh, the prophets, and T for Talmud. And just closing, people may say from Malachi chapter 3 that if Jesus, Yeshua, was the Mashiach, why in verses 1 to 3 when it says the Mashiach will come as a refiner's fire and a soap to the children of Levi the priest in the temple, and who can bear it? Well, he went, he died, he left. But remember, then, be, be, between those three verses to the last verse, then it says, in the last verse, Behold, I will send my servant Elijah before that great and terrible day. Meaning that the first coming of the Son of Man was to clear the house, Prepare Israel to repent, learn from that lesson, so that when the last verse in Malachi, okay, with 20 verses later, that when Elijah comes, that you will have been prepared and ready this time when the Mashiach comes with his soap and with his fire, you will already be ready. Why? Because Elijah stunned the hearts of the fathers to the children, the children to the fathers, amen, to prevent God smiting the earth with a curse like he did to Aaron's sons inside of the temple in Leviticus chapter 10. Well, praise be to Hashem. So when you hear, again, people criticize Jesus for his actions in the temple, tune in to this video. Praise be to God. Amen. And that will help you understand that the rabbis are wrong. Um, Jeremiah 7, um, Jeremiah 8, verse 8, uh, that you say you have the Torah, but you do not know me. All you scribes of the Torah, you are liars. You present check the wrong things uh, uh, like Yeshua the Mashiach said you do greatly uh, and that you do not know the scripture praise be to God David said in Psalm 1 to Hillen 1 blessed be the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in that law he meditates day and night and then you'll understand that the actions of Yeshua was the actions that only the Mashiach could and must do.